For a long while now, we've been on the hunt for solutions, if you like, that help us intensify those processes and especially reduce energy. That was the voice of the chief engineer at Seven Trent, a utility in the UK that is facing the wastewater challenge. How do you do more at your wastewater treatment facilities for less? And a very warm welcome from me. I'm joined by Tom Freyberg, who's been investigating. Tom, we're about to hear about a DuPont project uh, not far from Birmingham in the middle of England. It's been called a breakthrough by some. Is that the case? Well, thanks, Andrew. I think when a lot of new solutions or innovations hit the water market, they do claim to be the next biggest thing or the next biggest breakthrough. So it's interesting to go back and look at actually which part of this solution is potentially a breakthrough. On paper, this is the biggest MABR installation in the UK. But for me, it's the story of the journey of getting there, the, the journey of in, uh, innovation and what it takes to get to this stage with a startup partnering with a large scale water utility to co-innovate, to develop the technology with two-way communication, as opposed to developing a new solution in silo and then going out to sell it potentially banging on closed doors. So to find out more, I'm joined by Bob Steer from Seven Trent and Wayne Byrne from Oxymem, recently acquired by DuPont. Welcome gentlemen, good to see you. Hello. So I really want to start by hearing from Bob on the scale of the operation and the challenges the utility is facing on a day-to-day -day basis. We have the happy task of treating about 2 billion litres of sewage every day and um, we've actually got more than a thousand sewage treatment works and so you can imagine at any one investment period we're not going to be changing all of those so as new environmental uh, requirements come along or if population grows in a certain area of course we have to do work to those assets and you know frankly it's brilliant if we can find technologies that we can retrofit into the existing civil engineering structures to make that more efficient for our customers so you're talking about a huge centralized asset base there that will need to be retrofitted in order to help meet more stringent regulations in this case on ammonia but in terms of energy demands this must be significant across a thousand plants right well, I suppose the first thing is to say that the, by far the biggest energy use on a big sewage treatment works typically is blowing air into the bottom of tanks to feed the bacteria to treat the sewage. And uh, for most of our processes, actually, it's only about 25% of that air actually ends up with the bacteria it intends to get to. The rest of it just blows out the top, so 75% of that air is wasted. What I loved about Oximum, the very first time I saw it, is I recognised there was a process there where these clever membranes effectively present the bacteria with very small packets of oxygen, which just means that the transfer rate's really, really efficient, which means you're just not wasting all that oxygen and therefore all that energy. Now, Bob, you've mentioned their utilities facing a challenge of population growth, but utilities can't keep building new infrastructure to meet this demand, particularly in land constrained areas. So you have to really do more to get to, to you have to do more to get out of your existing assets, right, Wayne? Uh, instead of considering, um, a, a, I suppose, a scaling proposition to be effectively a civil engineering project that expanded the plant by 30 or 50 percent, what, what actually if we could deliver a proposition where you could deliver 5 percent or 10 percent additional capacity, whether that be flow or load, leveraging MABR? And actually, that so that was the nebulous of the idea, and that got really exciting because it meant that you could defer major capital projects, you could deliver a solution that focused on near-term needs and it, it was a massively capital efficient approach and which we've proven out over the last uh, seven years. So Wayne, a lot of startups are desperately seeking that first trial, that pilot or that project. So tell me, how, how did you get your foot in the door at Seven Trent and, and how did the partnership first happen? Well, uh, for, for us, uh, we were a very small team within University College Dublin. Um, we were uh, presented with an opportunity to go through what's called a commercialization phase supported by Enterprise Ireland. Uh, so we had a pot of capital in order to prove the technology out beyond lab scale. And we were looking for opportunities to deploy that. And, and we, were, we were invited along to an oil utilities event in the UK where we had the opportunity to present uh, Oxymem to the technology, or sorry, the R&D leaders within the water utility network in the UK. Um, and uh, after doing so, after a 15 minute presentation, um, 
the Severn Trent R&D team were, were first in the queue uh, to talk to us about the opportunity of coming to the uh, Minworth site to actually set up a pilot system for, for what is now known as Oxymem. And uh, for, for us, that was really an, a very important uh, technical milestone in order to get to a commercialization phase some 18 months later. So let's let's go back to Bob, because presumably you're being pitched by startups with new solutions all the time. So what would you say caught your and Seven Trent's eye when looking at this? The thing that really caught me about the Oxygen solution there was we had this big container on one of our major sites treating quite a lot of sewage at the time and it was running off a normal three pin plug. And I think for me, when you see something like that, that really brings it home how energy efficient this process is compared to some of our processes that we would normally use. So you mentioned there compared to conventional processes. So let's switch back to Wayne. Give us sort of in a, in a nutshell, if you will, how, how the MABR really compares to conventional approaches to get that energy saving. The proposition that, that MABR delivers is that um, effectively we're using a membrane um, to deliver the oxygen directly to a fixed film um, uh, or fixed biofilm. So the, the biology actually grows on the fiber and basically the, the gas is transferred across the wall of the fiber directly uh, to the biology that's consuming the pollutants. So you get this really, really efficient um, uh, exchange of, of oxygen from, from an energy perspective. And you also manage to concentrate um, the, the process. So you can do an awful lot more treatment per cubic meter um, deployed than conventional uh, 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 activated sludge tanks. So Andrew, there you go. We've heard from Bob and Wayne not only on the challenges that utilities are, are facing and really the need to do more with existing assets and the possibility of retrofitting such solutions to avoid uh, plant expansions. So this seems to have been a win-win partnership for all to help really prove MABR um, that's a necessary milestone on that journey of innovation. Well, thanks, Tom. We'll be coming back to you in just a moment. Uh, but right now, I'd like to go to the experts that are directly involved with the project at Spurnal and first go to Pete Vale. Pete is a technical lead for innovation at Seven Trent. Uh, Pete, how exactly does MABR fit into your R&D roadmap? So we, we've, had a, we've got a wide um, innovation program in Seven Trent uh, that um, uh, addresses the sort of shorter term business needs right through to the, the longer term, term strategic uh, opportunities. And MABR fits very uh, well into the, um, uh, the commitment that we've made to be net zero carbon emitters by 2030. So we need technologies that are much more energy efficient than some of the conventional technologies um, and technologies that uh, we're able to retrofit to existing plant that saves us pouring more concrete and other carbon intensive um, upgrades. So after the initial testing went well at the Minwith site, attention turned to Spurnal and uh, there you could really put the technology through its paces. So re the Resource Recovery Innovation Centre at Spurnal um, is our test bed to, to demonstrate the technologies that we need to transition to a much more circular way um, of uh, running our treatment plants. Um, so it's a fantastic um, facility um, that allows us yeah, to look at things like low energy treatment processes and processes that, that can recover material from wastewater. So really preparing for resource reclamation and the, uh, the circular economy. Uh, let's now speak with John McConaughey, who uh, was responsible for delivering the Oximem solution. Uh, John, what was it that impressed the Seven Trent team especially? Oximem offer a means of process intensification for a wastewater treatment plant. It's a solution that's easily deployed on site in a matter of days and has a very extremely low energy consumption. And is it a highly customized, very individual piece of uh, engineering? No, we have a, a, a standard solution. We have actually two, module, two models that we can install. One would be primarily for a high load pretreatment solution, maybe a standalone secondary zone. Or we can have our OxyFAS, which is what has been deployed in Spurnal, and that is for retrofitting into existing plants. Uh, Pete, how has the journey been so far? It's been fantastic. 
actually to 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 witness how the technologies develop from where we picked it up at what was a relatively early stage uh, through the development work we did uh, with Oxymem at Minworth and now on to the full-scale deployment at Spurnal. And that was done in uh, July of 2020 among some uh, pretty difficult circumstances and site restrictions due to uh, the lockdown. Uh, the person who supervised that, the project manager for the Spurnal installation, is Justin Silva. Uh, Justin, this was the first time that you'd installed this kind of technology. What challenges did you face? Uh, as project manager, um, I had to ensure that we could install the, uh, the MABRs into a live tank without having to drain the tank. So the challenge was how can we install 10 modules into the anoxic zone at Spurnal? That was challenge number one. Challenge number two that we had was we cannot use the Oximum regular towered solution of MABR because we didn't have enough depth in the tank. So we had to install them in the middle of the tank, 10 in a row. These two uh, challenges were uh, thrown back at Oximem and they came up with a fantastic solution of using a crane solution to drop, to deploy each MABR separately along the way throughout the tank. Uh, John, how did it go for you? Actually for us it was um, very simple, extremely simple. We had deployed core product to the guys at Seven Trend and when the time was right they had a competent contractor on site who just uh, with us sharing some basic information and some manuals, these guys were able to deploy within two days. They dropped the modules in in two days. In fact, Oxymem engineers were not actually on site for the deployment. So Justin, that's home office, remote working at its best? I think it's really crucial to, to highlight the ease of working um, with uh, Oxymem and Mott McDonald Bentley to install this without having to have Oximem on site, but rather give us what they need and how they need it installed, our contractor installing it. That really proved to be a smooth installation of the MABR. So let's now bring in the person who's uh, to your left there, responsible for operations on site, Steve Pitt. Steve, how did the installation go for you? Uh, the fact that we could drop these units in live, basically we couldn't isolate any of the activated sludge lanes, so this could drop in a live process, so it didn't impact our overall performance, so we could still meet our environmental requirements, um, so it could be dropped in a live process in a live normal working day, basically, which is an advantage. So plug and play, um, how has the Oxymem MABR been performing? We've seen around about 9% ammonia removal in an uptick pocket. Um, what we're able to do here at Spurnal as well is compared to another activated sludge lane without an MABR in it as a control. Um, and we're seeing obviously um, no removal in the control lanes as we'd expect. And about 9% about ish we've had um, in the first few months of installation of the MABR. And during that time, you have had unexpected surges of ammonia coming into the plant, I understand? Yes, we have um, a number of potential inputs to here, sludge processing sites as well. Sometimes we have variable strength of things like centrate and other returns from the sludge handling route. So yes, it was basically a sort of a spike of incoming strength, um, which the MABR units dealt with very well. Good stuff, thank you. Now Pete, uh, you must be very pleased with how things uh, have gone, uh, but has the project attracted a lot of outside attention? So yeah, I've had lots of conversations at various conferences, uh, both nationally and internationally. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a real appetite to, to, to understand um, the potential of the system. So we're expecting, when we're able to, uh, lots of visits uh, down to Spurnal to, to have a look at the technology. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Tom, it sounds like it's been a good start for Oxymem MABR. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, it's an interesting case study looking at the implementation of a, a new solution. And I think that data point of the 9% removal of ammonia during this early stage is, is really positive for the, the partnership moving forward. But now I want to come back to Bob and, re and really just kind of look ahead, if you will, because this has been a flagship installation for both Seven Trent and Oxymem. But what about the, the future of MABR across the rest of your assets? You may remember that we have five yearly business plans. And so we've got a plan this time around that involves quite a few interventions at lots of those sewage treatment works we talked about, whether that's to actually increase 
the, the quality of the effluent going to the river or actually deal with new growth or actually because we want to make them more efficient. So we've got quite a big workbook ahead of us, this AMP. And what we knew for sure, of course, is we're going to have more in the next AMP and the next AMP after that. Um, so for us, MABR is a bit about putting extra capacity because we can use the civil assets of some of these sites again and again and just put extra M&E kit in, brilliant. And it's a bit about improving efficiency because we've still got some sites out there where we're still blowing that air through the bottom of these tanks and blowing it out the top. So that's where we see MABR coming in for us. Thank you, Bob. Interesting to see about the continued goals to you know increase uh, efficiency across the other assets. But Wayne, presumably this is not just a start for MABR, right? We think the future is very, very bright for, for MABR and we see it as being a, a pervasive tool in uh, the expansion of plant demands over the course of the next 15, 20 years. So I want to come back to you, Bob, because Seven Trent's also participating in wider Horizon 2020 initiatives that really focus on the circular economy. We heard from Pete Vail about that as well. And when it comes to the resource economy, water treatment plants, they have a big role to play, right? Absolutely. And if you were to go to the, the sewage works at, at Redditch, up on the wall is a, is a brown paper schematic we drew right back in the time when we were talking with Wayne earlier on, back in 2012, 13. And it absolutely had the sewage treatment process as a conveyor belt of products and with marketplaces for each of them. And that's that still remains our vision today. You know, that that's where our innovation strategy is really headed for the for the long term in the wastewater sector. And MABR is a great step around that to make to make our energy efficiency much better. Thank you, Bob. So there you have it, Andrew, a, a tale of co-innovation that will perhaps be seen as a landmark in the commercialization journey of MABR history. I think what's important to really recognise here is there was a lot of pressure on that initial pilot project, not just from the utility and the, the companies involved. I know the team were taking partners, investors, future clients to the site to really see how it's performing. And if you take a step back, you know, UK utilities are under increasing pressure at the moment, particularly when it comes to wastewater treatment, as well as combined sewer overflow infrastructure. So these stories of successful implementation are going to be important as a reference point moving forward to see how a technology can go from the university to a pilot to a full-scale implementation. Tom, thanks a lot for that report. Uh, the UK's largest MABR plant. And thanks as well for your interest. If you want to learn more about Oxymem MABR, please visit our website at DuPont Water Solutions. We look forward to hearing from you.